Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead, where today we are continuing the processing of apples from our trees that are absolutely loaded. And we have out there a Granny Smith tree that we haven't even touched. It won't be ripe for another two or three weeks. And we've got apples coming out of our ears. And so I'm trying to think of anything that we can do with apples to preserve this harvest. So today we're going to be making apple pie filling. Now I have done a previous video on apple pie filling that I will link at the end of this video, but it was done with regular water bath canning. Today we're going to do steam canning, something just a little bit different. Also, I'm going to put the link to two different recipes right below the video description. The one that I'm using today is this one from the National Center for Home Food Preservation. This is the USDA publication, and it is um, apple pie filling. The other one is from Healthy Canning, and that is a website that I trust. The advantage to that website is, and the recipes are very, very similar is that you can select U.S. measurements or metric measurements, and you can also select the number of pints or quarts that you choose to do, and it will adjust the amounts of the recipe. So we're going to be doing, I'm targeting for seven quarts. Uh, we may make a little bit more. If so, we just might have to have an apple pie for dinner tonight. Sorry, Jim. Well, you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> Didn't like apple pie anyway. One of the most important things with making any pie filling that we are going to cook is the use of clear gel. This is clear gel powder and it is the kind that you cook. It is not the instant kind. And I just got this on Amazon. I'll put it up in our um, Amazon store. It is a type of cornstarch that has been stabilized. Don't use cornstarch, don't use flour in canning pie filling because they break down and become kind of yucky. But clear gel is wonderful. Now I have in this bowl the measured amounts of sugar, which is five and a half cups of sugar. I have the cinnamon and the nutmeg in here. I'm now going to add a cup and a half of the clear gel. And it acts exactly like cornstarch. And so we are going to want to fold it in with the sugar before we add it so that it does not clump up. A cup and a half, so one more of these. Now I'm just going to stir the clear gel in with the sugar, cinnamon, and nutmeg, and that will help it so that it does not clump. And it does not have to be completely homogeneous here, just so the clear gel is broken down and mixed in with the sugar. I think this is pretty good. Oh, that was a clump of cinnamon. Then in this pot, which is my jam pan, my favorite all time jam pan, it's gonna go right here in just a minute. We are to add the sugar and the clear gel mixture. This gives me the opportunity to mix it just a little bit better in this taller pan. Whew. And that's the clear gel that is coming up. set this aside. Checking the recipe. So we um, combine the sugar, clear gel, cinnamon in a large kettle with the water and the apple juice. Water is two and a half cups, which is right here. And I need five cups of apple juice. This is a two cup measure. Two. Four. And one more. Mix five. Mm. 
and I can set this aside. I'm going to stir this again. Okay, it's all off the bottom, it's all mixed together, so I'm going to set it up here. I have lemon juice, three quarters of a cup, set off to the side. We have to add it at a special moment. Now let's take a look at our apples. I process these apples using my apple pearer corer peeler machine. This is also in our Amazon store. I couldn't process apples without this machine. It is fabulous. And if you want a more in-depth um, video on how this works, you can just check last Monday's video uh, where I talk about dehydrating apples and Jim gets a close-up on how this works. And I will put a little card up here in this corner so you can just click on that card and it will take you to that video. Actually, I think it puts it in your feed so you can click on the video. Now, the next thing we have to do, and I used about um, three and a half to four cups of apples per quart. So <clears throat> I have water boiling over on the stove. And what we have to do is in about six cup um, amounts, I need to put this down in boiling water and boil them. After the water comes back to a boil, boil these apples for one minute. And I'll tell you why we do that. These are raw apples. They're very buoyant. They're very full of air. By boiling them for just a few moments, you will see tons of air bubbles escaping. So we're driving the air out of the apples, making them a little less buoyant, and that does help heat transfer in the final canning. So Jim is going to come over here, and we will um, take a look at those air bubbles coming out. So this is a pretty good rolling boil. I'm just going to gently put these in here. Immediately you can see the air bubbles start to come from the apples. And that's what we want. So it's not quite to a boil yet. This will also whiten up the apples. The apples were in a lemon juice solution. Some of them got a little bit brown, but you know, it's apple pie, so we don't really care. All right, there we go. So Hey Siri, set timer for one minute. One minute, counting now. Okay, so we are going to boil those for one minute, see how they become white again. Then I'm going to scoop them up with this um, strainer, put them in this bowl right here, cover them with this cloth, and we're going to keep them warm while we process all of them. All right, lots of air being driven out of those apples, which is what we want. Okay, we're going to strain them into this bowl and get another batch started. Here's our next batch. And we'll be back when this is done. This is the apple juice, the water, the sure gel, the sugar, and the cinnamon and nutmeg mixed together. And now we have it on medium heat. I'm going to be stirring constantly until it starts to bubble and thicken, at which time I'm going to add the lemon juice all with one pour. And then we time it for one minute. And then we add the apples and I have them draining over here. They're still just hot as can be. I'm actually going to put the dish towel over the top of them again to preserve that heat. So we will come back in just a few minutes when the action starts. I am feeling that this is thickening up. I can pull it up from the bottom and you can see that it's thickening up. You can see the blobs of clear filling starting to float. It won't be long now before the whole thing is going to clarify and bubble. So don't be alarmed if this is what yours looks like. This is what it is supposed to look like. So we are almost there. Oh, it's getting hard to stir. Yeah, it looks that way. Okay, we are there. 
So I'm going to pour in the lemon juice all at once. Hey Siri, set timer for one minute. One minute, starting now. And we're going to stir constantly, incorporating this lemon juice in. Hopefully not burning my hand with a splash. Ow. Oh my gosh, it looks wonderful. Oh, look at that. All right, we're about ready. So I'm going to put these in. And we have to fold it all together and then immediately get it into the jars. I need to get this down so I can have a better leverage at it. Okay. Beautiful white apples. I do not know what variety of apples are on our trees. Um, when we bought the house, nobody knew. But they are wonderful eating apples and they make really good pie as well. Okay, we are ready. I just have to do a little taste. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Here we go. One of the things that I have found with apple pie filling is that you really have to respect the headspace because it has a tendency to boil over. I don't think we're going to get seven quarts from this. Well, we get whatever we get. Right. So we have to fill fast and get them over in the canner. I have the uh, steam canner heating up. I'm going to do the air thing right now. And notice I'm leaving just that full inch is really, really important. All right, we are going to have five quarts with a little bit left over. Jim says, oh boy, we can just eat that for dessert, which we will. I am using, because of the nature of this filling and the way that it dripped, I'm using a full washcloth, clean washcloth, to wipe the rims. And it's just water. There was no fat involved here, so we don't need to use vinegar. Alright, let's get these in the canner. The rack in the bottom will hold seven. We're putting five in. And for our elevation, these have to process for 35 minutes. So we will wait till this comes back to a really ro rolling boil. You can see the condensation here, so it was already uh, boiling. So we'll watch that carefully. And when the steam really starts to come out, a good full head of steam, then we will start timing for 35 minutes. So we will be back when these are ready to come out. Here is the last one. They just finished. 
and they are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. No boil overs. Everything looks like it's going to seal. It haven't sealed yet, but we should maybe start hearing some pops pretty quick. One of these jars will do a nine inch pie. And um, I'm going to link a couple of videos that are similar to this one so that you can see. I'll link the pie crust video and I, another apple pie filling that I did with um, water bath canning. And um, so the next thing we need to do with our apples is to do a pie from scratch. Not pre-canned, not anything, but just from scratch. So we'll be doing that shortly, uh, probably in a few weeks. I have, Jim and I have something special that we're kind of cooking up. And uh, so we'll let you in on that in just a few weeks. The reason that I got five quarts instead of seven quarts, because I did follow the recipe for seven quarts, was that it is a little difficult to measure the apples. When they say four and a half or five and a half or six cups of apples, and uh, you put them into uh, a big bowl that kind of measures, it's easy to get off that. And I was obviously short on apples. But I think that they turned out just fine. And um, we have a a few more apples out there that I can keep uh, experimenting with. We don't eat a lot of pie. I did when uh, I made lots and lots of pies when my children were growing up, uh, but I don't do so much anymore. So I want to get a year's supply in, so that will probably be at least one more batch. I hope this steam canning experience was helpful to you. And another video that I'm going to link, in fact, I'm just going to put the card right up here in the corner, is our video on how you can make your own steam canner from perhaps pots that you already have, so you don't have to buy one. And then with steam canning, you simply follow any recipe that requires uh, water bath canning, and right down to the T, and instead of submerging them in water in your water bath canner, you just put them in the steam canner, process them for the same amount of time called for in water bath. So it is a parallel to water bath canning. So thank you. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't. We just enjoy our community so much. We have so much valuable information that is posted under every single video. So be sure and read the comments. I always learn things. Jim always learns things. It's, we have a great time. So we will see you very shortly with another video.